President Biden has landed in Saudi Arabia and met with King Salman and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. It's a delicate diplomacy for an administration that is pledged to put human rights first, but is also dealing with the realities of Saudi influence in the region over oil. Nick Schifrin begins our coverage. The oldest American president and the Middle East's youngest leader began with a fist bump. Mohammed bin Salman, known as MBS, Saudi Arabia's de facto ruler, across from President Biden and his advisors, a photo op the Saudis wanted, but ended with a reminder of the two countries' tension. Jamal Khashoggi, will you apologize to his family, sir? Despite the interruption, the meeting scheduled for one hour ran for three and produced a series of announcements opening Saudi airspace to civilian aircraft flying to and from Israel, removing U.S. peacekeepers from a Red Sea island, a move that could help Saudi-Israeli normalization, and a Saudi commitment to extend the truce in Yemen. After, President Biden said the meeting went well, but he also raised the murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. He basically said that he, uh, he, he was not personally responsible for it. I, I indicated I thought he was. When the president landed, he was greeted by a government official, a far cry from the over-the-top reception for former President Trump in 2017 and MBS's personal welcome. Trump's legacy also played out this morning when President Biden visited Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. There was a formal red carpet welcome, but Abbas criticized Biden for not reversing Trump's policies. <laughs> Reopening the U.S. consulate in East Jerusalem, removing the Palestinian Liberation Organization from the U.S. terrorist list. We are not terrorists, and reopening its office in Washington. President Biden fulfilled none of those requests. Instead, he pledged $100 million for Palestinian hospitals in East Jerusalem and $200 million for the U.N. agency that supports Palestinian refugees. He tried to display empathy, but came up empty on specifics about Israeli-Palestinian peace. So even if the ground is not ripe for, at this moment to restart negotiations, the United States and my administration will not give up on trying to bring the Palestinians and Israelis and both sides closer together. But today's focus was on Saudi Arabia and the man who will be king. MBS has engineered some reforms, giving Saudi women more rights, opening up entertainment, and curbing religious extremists. But U.S. officials also believe he's the source of the kingdom's crackdown on its critics and say he approved the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Do you believe Saudi Arabia can be a partner to the United States? It's absolutely not possible to have such a partner. Abdullah Aloud is a Saudi activist. I spoke to him last week in the U.S. I see him as uh, not a reformer, but rather a deformer who killed our friend uh, Jamal Khashoggi at the Saudi consulate in Istanbul and dismembered him. Uh, I don't see a person like that as a reformer. Abdullah's father, Salman, is a prominent Muslim scholar who called for change in the Saudi government. He's been held in solitary confinement and faces the death penalty. My father was one of the main and prominent named names that actually uh, theorized about uh, uh, democracy in Islam. And uh, this is the kind of Islam that uh, MBS does not want, although he's claiming he's modernizing. Another Saudi detained, Suleiman al duish a well-known Islamic preacher who criticized King Salman for giving his son too much power. He's been detained since 2016. His son, Malik al duish spent years campaigning for his release and was jailed just two weeks ago. He recorded this video before his arrest. Disappearance is not a solution, and it's not just to disappear a person from his family for more than five years. Democracy, basically. That's what you wanted. It's nothing strange, nothing weird, nothing radical. Uh, it's simple, straightforward. Uh, the Saudi people deserve, like any other people on this planet, democracy, basic liberties, uh, multi-party system, separation of power, uh, and uh, independent judiciary. It's as simple as this. And Nick Schifrin joins me now from the Press Filing Center in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Nick, great to see you. Uh, we just heard how President Biden characterized his discussions with the Crown Prince about the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. What have Saudi officials been telling you about that? 
Yeah, so just a few minutes ago, William, I interviewed Adil Al-Jaber. Uh, he is the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, effectively the Deputy Foreign Minister here, uh, and a longtime leader in foreign affairs in Saudi uh, circles. Uh, and he said that that is not what happened. Uh, that's not what he saw, it, at, at, at least he heard uh, in the meeting. He said that uh, President Biden did bring up Jamal Khashoggi, uh, but it was not in the same language. It was certainly not as confrontational uh, as President Biden claimed. Uh, and so the two sides clearly uh, are still disagreeing over human rights. Uh, and the bottom line from the Saudi perspective is that, yes, President Biden did push MBS on this. Uh, MBS said it wasn't me and that we've taken steps uh, to uh, tackle the people who MBS claims uh, acted uh, in a rogue fashion. Uh, of course, the U.S. believes that MBS approved that murder himself. Um, separately, Nick, one of the main reasons President Biden is in Saudi Arabia is to, is to pressure the kingdom to ramp up oil production, ostensibly to bring down gas prices elsewhere and here in the U.S. Have Saudi officials said whether they're going to actually follow through on that ask? Yeah, so I think U.S. officials wouldn't use the word pressure. They would use the word discussion about uh, energy security. But of course, part of that, William, let's be honest, uh, is hoping that Saudi Arabia opens the spigots so that gas prices in the states can come down. Uh, President Biden tonight said that he believed Saudi officials were on the same page as him. But, but again, Adil Al-Jaber, I asked him specifically whether Saudi Arabia intended to uh, increase production in the next few weeks, and he would not say that Saudi Arabia planned to do that. He said that Saudi Arabia and OPEC had increased production over the last few months already. Uh, and independent analysts, William, do note that between the UAE and Saudi Arabia, even if there were some increase, it would not necessarily lead uh, to easing of pay, uh, prices uh, inside the United States. So uh, again, uh, President Biden uh, quite confident about what Saudi officials saying. Uh, Saudi officials who I talked to uh, aren't quite so sure. Nick, there's also been a lot of talk, as you've been reporting on this trip, about better relations regionally with Israel. Are the Saudis on board with that move? Yeah, it's such an interesting question because we do see Egypt, Jordan, uh, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, the countries that have normalized relations politically with Israel beginning to share military and intelligence uh, uh, with uh, between the militaries and between the intelligence services of those countries. And what that allows them to do, William, is to start to talk about a kind of regional air defense architecture against Iran, Iranian missiles and Iranian drones. Uh, Saudi officials are not quite there yet. Uh, I asked Adel al-Jaber about that. He says that we need to see progress uh, in Israel. We need to see peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians before Saudi Arabia can really, truly normalize with Israel. Uh, and that includes kind of behind the scenes military intelligence cooperation that U.S. officials tell me is simply not happening, uh, in part because they say King Salman is still alive, William. MBS isn't quite in charge yet. Uh, and so long as King Salman is alive, uh, the people I speak to inside the U.S. government uh, believe that there will be no normalization and, and no real effort to share military or intelligence uh, between Saudi Arabia and Israel as the Israelis would like. All right, Nick Schifrin joining us from Saudi Arabia. Thanks so much, Nick. Thanks.